All right, guys, Hatch Crabber here again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valor News. Plenty to dive into today, especially on FNS's thoughts on what Marv's plan is going to be going into the upcoming 2023 VCT season. When teams struggle, will they go down the route of getting a Marv or getting a Sabrosa? Or will they decide to step into Tier 2 and potentially sign up one of those players competing in the Tier 2 side instead? Very much into your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Plenty to dive into today. Firstly, an awesome announcement from this particular team, Fennel, going into the upcoming season. Quick note as well on version 1. Seems to me like more than likely version 1 are now going to call it a day in Valorant going forward. Just because Effies is now also gone from the team, he's looking for a new opportunity. I'm not sure if Effies has, um, has got something lined up just because I think there were some rumours about where Effies might potentially go. But look, we know that that version 1 team, many of their players have gone other ways. Xander, you know, Penny, Whippy, they've all now gone to various teams M80 G2 respectively and um look version 1 did so well at the opening part right of the um the Valorant scene they were looking so good for some time they had a pretty bad rough season in 2022 they failed to make it to any of the big tournaments they failed to get picked for the partnership league and therefore what are they going to do going forwards one option for version 1 that's worth mentioning is just because in January when everything kicks off January the 9th the teams start to get ready to go in the tier 2 side many of the tier 2 rosters might well do surprisingly well compared to other opportunities position and therefore if that is the case like let's say an unknown tier 2 team of players that people aren't really familiar with does incredibly well wins in the challenger side qualifies for the challenger circuit and then at which point many organizations will say hey these guys might not have even been signed to an organization if they were it was a rather small organization version one or others could then come through and say hey we're looking to give these guys a shot get them back involved in our team and uh, try and build up some talent that way and that might be a successful option so yeah version one they're out of it for now Effies is now gone as well, they might return to Valorant in the future, especially if there is a particularly exciting looking challengers team in January that comes out of nowhere and surprises people and organizations are like, you know what, that could be a team that we could take far or make some serious progress with. Now, Sintels, they're of course getting ready to go. No real confirmation yet on what exactly is happening on the whole, you know, the, the sassy Pancada side, when they're going to be able to get practicing and all this type of stuff going forward into the new season. But one question that is there, if this team fails to deliver what they're expected to do, if maybe their practice woes at the start of the season kind of like carry into the start of well next season in the VCT what changes might they make if any and where will they go to try and make those changes FNS believes that likes of Marv the likes of Sabrosa are perfectly positioned to get picked up there right now one team I expect to be very good at the start of next year is 100 Thieves they have Cryo of course who's been dominant since he really came into the VCT he won in Will Minders kind of ratings here second place for the NA VCT's most valuable player crazy stuff and um i mean yeah to think he was like the second place mvp behind presumably yay that's going to be announced very shortly it's very impressive from cryo given like i mean look the guy's only 20 years old he says here on twitter last night as well you know it's happy birthday of course to cryo for yesterday but it's incredible to think what he's achieved already and will more than likely achieve in the future like him given how long he has ahead of him and also 100 of these looking so good right now the team to beat in the north american side i would well argue now what about the other teams the other teams expected to be good nrg Sentinels, 100 Thieves. Now, Evil Geniuses, I say, have less, um, they have less pressure on them to a certain extent because people aren't really expecting them to be that good next season, let's be honest, the Evil Geniuses roster. So, you know, with that being kept in mind, maybe, you know, they will give their team a bit of a longer leash. However, the top teams, the NRGs, the Cloud9, the Sentinels, if they fail to perform, what will they decide to do? Now, there are many talented players out there, not just in Tier 2, but also not even playing in Tier 2. The likes of Sentinels have Sick on their bench, but, um, I mean, look sick might not be so match ready because if you're on the bench for one of these teams you can't play in tier two now the same thing for the match readiness is the case with a player like Marv. but we know what Marv can do we know what he's done in the past we know what he'll achieve more likely in the future the guy's still only like 21 so he still has a crazy career ahead of him as well and it's not like he's just stepped back from competing entirely the guy yes okay he stepped away from competition for like the professional circuits but you know the guy's still playing ranked the guy's still playing with other players still keeping his nose in the scene effect and um, I don't expect him to just disappear forever. This guy will get picked up again. Now, is his approach here to getting picked up again the best way to possibly do it? That's what FNS seems to believe. And FNS says, hey, Marv's absolutely killed it with his strategy. And when a top team fails to perform, they will hit up Marv first before going into any other direction. Yeah, but they, here's the thing you guys don't know about people like Yasin and Marv. Yasin and Jimmy is how they are. They want to be wanted. They want to like 
take a step back. So then when the bad the teams start doing them. bad, yeah, yeah, they go, yeah. oh, what about this guy? <laughs> he hasn't played in a bit, but I remember how good he was. <laughs> it's actually smart as It's actually genius. But they don't know that I know that they're doing that. They won't admit it either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't. They take that to the grave. Like every one of these one out of we're a one out of twenty five, right? Me and Sam are two out of twenty five. All those players are brave as they're taking a risk. I'm this is a make being. or break for your career. You you I'm suck, you're being. gone. And if you're not, if you don't suck, then you're in, right? We're always yeah. having to prove ourselves. People like Jimmy, I'm going to take a break at the age of twenty one <laughs> because my girlfriend doesn't allow me to play. You know what I mean? I can't. I can't be doing that kind of. Shit. Well, but Loki's smart with Jimmy. Did. As genius. Win a couple of tournaments, get MVP in there. Boom. Fine, uh, you bait, bro. You're gonna bait me anyway. Right? You're gonna bait me in the matches anyway. <laughs> I mean, you're a smokes player. Jimmy was baiting me, so you have to bait me. One, is, uh, one, 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 that's one elbow. Dumb it, dumb it, dumb it. Pound mid. The one. <laughs> Last player standing. Spike down mid. All right, all right, all right. I think we just need a slam B, no? Uh, who's B? Um, I think I, I've seen Reyna walk on elbow a few rounds, but he's I'm generally sure mid, and then okay, I think they've yeah, had sure. they had the option. Oh, wait, enemy wait, 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 wait. Oh my! Oh, my teammates! Damn, you just broke the curse, that's crazy. Alright, we're back in it. One man on me. Such a joke. Okay. Um, is Mike like for A? Uh, he pushes it up. Uh... Okay. Nice round, Jimmy. So does the same thing to Marv here apply to Sabrosa as well? Maybe to a lesser extent given where Sabrosa sits in terms of his stock right now compared to let's say a player like Marv. But nonetheless Marv does seem to be interested in getting back involved at some point or another. Now is his approach the best approach to take? Because at the end of the day he's an unrestricted free agent. If any team in tier 1 is struggling, who is the first guy they're going to talk to if they want a player that's clutch? If they want a player that's great on the controller role, who are they going to go to? More than likely Marv is going to be the absolute number one candidate for many teams. As I say, just because teams have substitute players, let's say NRG, they've got Thwaifo, but um, you know, is he really going to be a long-term replacement in their starting team if they want to make a change? Maybe not. They might say, you know what, let's bring Marv in, let's either drop some or switch some around in terms of what role he's going to be running, and that's the way to make it work. Now, um, and this also applies to, right, if you are a Tier 1 team, if you are an NRG, if you're a Cloud9, if you're a Sentinels, or even 100 Thieves, and you're struggling, do you go to Tier 2? Because yes, you've got a bench player, you've got a substitute player, but going to Tier 2 might not work so well as um, as it has done in the past, just because the tier 2 teams have great incentive to try and stick around to their primary roster. Like, let's say you are an M80 team, let's say you're a tier 1 roster, and you want a Xander, you want an E, you want a Nismo, any of these players, or even you want a player from G2, a Whippy, a Penny, you know, a Shazam, whatever. Like, um, you know, will M80, will the guard, let's say if someone wants Trent, will a player from, you know, even FaZe Clan, let's say Baby Bay, someone wants to pick him up from the tier 1 scene, will they be down with that? Would FaZe be down with that? Would the guards be down with getting rid of Trent? Like, um, you know, in a usual circumstance, a tier two team would have no real issues in selling a player to tier one, but the, the incentives and the stakes are so much higher. If you're signed to a tier two organization, that organization is not going to want to let you go. If you're a Xander, what are the chances of getting picked up by a tier one team this season? Very low indeed, because, um, I mean, first of all, you would have to, I'm sure M80 would say, you know what, if we get rid of any of our players here, the same for G2, the same for the guards, if they sell Trent to a starting, you know, to a partnership team, their chances of qualifying for the partnership league by winning Ascension go down substantially. And therefore, that's a big loss for them to try and make a change like that. Therefore, they want a lot of money. Tier 1 teams might say, you know what, that's not worth it for us. We're going to get a free agent instead, the likes of Marv, the likes of Sabrosa. So maybe FNS is right to say, given the set of circumstances we have currently in Tier 2, it actually makes way more sense for a top tier team in partnerships to sign a player from, you know, that's as a free agent like Marv rather than going on any route like this. So it's arguable to say that Marv, what he could have done is just signed for a tier one team and played anyway. But you know, for a case like Sabrosa's case, if he had offers from tier two teams, it might make in some weird way more sense to actually not sign any of those offers, especially if you don't believe that, let's say he could have been on TSM anyway, but he doesn't really feel like TSM have that much chance of qualifying for Ascension and winning Ascension at the end of the season. Then, you know, why not not play for them anyway? Hope you get an offer from tier one 
one, because if you did sign for tier sim, you're probably not getting an offer from tier one. That could be argued as it stands. So, um, yeah, very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Definitely an interesting set of points here I thought I'd raise for you guys, especially because, I mean, look, these are the top four teams. I think that Evil Geniuses, they'll probably give their team a little bit of a longer leash, just because, you know, there's more time for them to think about things with their roster having less expectations. But look, NRG, 100 Thieves, Cloud9, Sentinels, like, um, look, if they struggle to perform, I'm sure that uh, Marv is going to be one of the top options for them going into the new season. But very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.